If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement and male advantage ebook, all links are in the bio. It's definitely just a byproduct of consistency and being disciplined. Like you said, I mean, hormonally, it seems like guys can just go a little bit further, like our shelf life in terms of our body responding um, and keeping our youth. So it's not too late to seize the day, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a, thank you. And it's amazing what that last little bit of maybe like 10 to 15 pounds of water weight or just residual like fat you've held for a while, because just on that last stretch is when your bone structure and your face really comes to light and you start to see all the muscle that you've always been working on for so many years in the gym. It's that last bit when you get to kind of like that HD look and you, you, you lean out to that point, <laughs> that's when you, you really, really see um, everything come together. Because I had worked out my whole life prior to that. Even when you saw me in that before picture, mm. I'd always worked out. Um, but I, I have a, a great friend named George Waschuk, and he was um, a physique competitor, and he was um, wanting to train me to be kind of his first client that he was going to kind of start a coaching thing. And so I was the guinea pig. And so I did like a 45 day plan with him. And I just went like zero to 60 and, you know, like zero to hundred, I should say. Um, that first picture you saw wasn't the same before and after. I have other before and afters from that program, but they are both really dramatic. But what I'm getting at is that talking to him made me realize how much your diet needs to complement your training. And if you don't do all those necessary tweaks, you really are just spinning your wheels and you're, you're just, you're hiding all that work. Like I said, for so long, because diet is truly what um, separates those guys you see that are so shredded. Um, some of them, very few have that crazy good metabolism and it's always worked for them. But most of the guys you see, whether it's a men's health cover or a men's fitness cover and stuff, it's the diet. That's really the factor. <laughs> Consistency, of course, too. Sure. And, you know, part of that before picture was, you know, I drank beer more often at the time. I was working way too much. Um, I had too much sugar and dairy in my diet. And it's just those type of things that really do. Everyone's carrying around a certain amount of like water weight and then a little bit of fat. And once you take care of those things, yeah, you just be amazed. But it, it does... It does depend on like everything I always tell people is that because I do online um, mentorships too with um, people, some people regularly, sometimes just one offs, but they always ask me like what to do. And I'm like, well, it just depends. Like, are you going to try to um, make it happen in the next 30 days? Or do you want to do like a lifestyle change? Because everyone yo-yos, there's a million yeah. fad diets out there. There's a million training programs and they essentially all echo a lot of the same things. But it just depends on which one can you do the rest of your life, because that's the one that I want. I don't want to just get shredded for a shoot and then yo-yo back and have a belly. You know what I mean? Like it's it's that's so frustrating. I'd rather just maintain something. So I've tried to figure that out for myself over time. And um, I've, I've learned a lot just even in the last year after I know feeling like I knew so much the last decade. But um, that was the moment when it changed the before and after, because I started working with my friend who's a coach, like I said. I got super shredded. It was all diet based um, almost entirely. And then that spurred me to do a photo shoot because I had a friend from being in the photography industry for so long that was shooting a, a casting for Harley Davidson. And he's like, Hey, you'd be perfect. You ride motorcycles. And I was like, Oh, I don't know. I really didn't really think about modeling. <laughs> is that your first I was job? 32. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> which is straight crazy, to the right? top. Yeah. I know, which is, I got thrown into a, something, just a whirlwind. Um, and that's what kind of led to the, doing the modeling for the next decade and uh, or so, I should say. And um, I stayed in shape because of that. I had to, mm. you know what I mean? And so I had to find a way to make that program I did with my friend last <laughs> long term instead of yo-yoing back. I, you know, the job demanded it, so.
Uh, cardio was part of it. Absolutely. Um, you kind of just get to a point where you're just trying to purge water. Um, so you can get that H HD look and you can get off the fat by the diet portion, but towards, towards the middle of the end of it, I mean, the cardio is definitely the sweat factor. I mean, you're drinking a ton of water, you know, a gallon a day at least. And so it's just a cycle, right? The water in and the water out um, from the sweat. So the bloat just sheds off and um, the cardio was around 45 minutes steady, or I would do 20 minutes hit uh, the, yeah. those choices. Right. And then the weightlifting was really minimal. It was more for blood flow, uh, more for stimulation. It wasn't for growth at that point. It's impossible because you're at a caloric deficit. So not impossible, but very challenging. And so, uh, you know, it's mostly high volume, like 20 reps for all the sets kind of. Um, uh, what I try to do is Monday through Friday, I'll, like I'll have meal preps, um, on like on a Sunday where I spend maybe 45 minutes at the most. And I kind of make all my proteins and, uh, my clean carbs, complex carbs. I mean, and, um, I, I pull from that all week, like today, um, being here at headquarters, I just um, brought a spit grilled asparagus. I have a little bit of broccoli with it too. Um, lean chicken breast and uh, cut up sweet potatoes. And that's no surprise. Like that's like the, that's like the, one of the staple type of meals, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless you're doing eggs. Um, and it, but that I don't want us to, to anyone listening to think like, Oh, that's all I ever eat. I knew it. It's always those guys with the chicken breast and the <laughs> asparagus, right? Like I don't want yeah, to eat yeah. that my whole life. So I do work in that meal, um, once a day if I can, um, you know, throughout the week. Um, but it's not, I could sub it with different things, obviously, but what I've tried to do is Monday through Friday, like I'm, I'm always on a whole food diet for one, but Monday through Friday, I try to eat pretty, pretty clean. And it's, it's always emphasis with my macros in terms of my proteins being high. Um, my healthy fats, um, are all avocado, um, hemp hemp shells or i mean I'm, I'm, it's a brain farting um hemp it's like hemp seeds or something i don't no, know it's like a new type of omega yeah yeah and then um i usually do asparagus because it's a, di a natural diuretic like you'll see a lot of physique competitors eating asparagus for that reason um so i usually work that in and then i'll do broccoli otherwise and then my carbs are um rice and sweet potatoes and oats and then obviously other proteins will be eggs and ground turkey um and so that's just a variety of like using really good hot sauces using um you know greek yogurt as your obviously the low sugar greek yogurt that's like 20 grams of protein serving using that as a sour cream alternative and find all these ways to make it really tasty the weekend comes and then i can eat pretty much what i want but it doesn't mean that i'm going to eat like pizza, hamburger, burrito all in the yeah. same day, <laughs> but I will most likely I have a huge burrito being in Southern California. Like we're so close to Mexico. We have really great Mexican food. So I will typically do that on the weekend. I will have alcohol. I'll have at least like five drinks over the weekend. Most likely, uh, during the week I'll have red wine on maybe every couple nights. Um, so it's not like I'm in stage ready mode or photo shoot ready mode all yeah, year we long. Um, I would think that's dependent on the person. Like if, if they're okay. the type of person that really um, is wired to do the militant thing and, and it works for them. And when they decide to do it, they commit where someone else might just be like, I, I hate being so strict. I want to just get lean over time. I want to slowly incorporate these new ideas into my lifestyle. And I want to get more familiar with it because the problem is whenever I talk to people is that when they go all in, if they aren't already someone who's used to being more disciplined than the average person, then they never even get past week one because it's too extreme of a shift in lifestyle change. So that's the point of like getting past those 21 days when something starts to feel like a habit and you're getting used to it and you're getting to the point where you're not resenting what you're doing. I think that's so important, right? And to enjoy it to some degree, to make it your own and then slowly swap out those bad habits. But I will say that like, if I eat bad on a weekend, for sure, I will have residual bloat for a couple of days 
unless I immediately do a gallon of water the next couple of days. I immediately clean my diet back up. Um, I do like 45 minutes steady on like a Stairmaster, something where I'm really sweating. It's typically the cardio that I can like, I can get that bloat off really quick if yeah. I get an intense sweat. So I, I would also say uh, to your point that um, if you if you are at your target weight, then yes, the weekend thing can work. But if you're at a point where you're like, I'm just okay with where I'm at, but I'd like to progress at a more rapid pace, the weekend thing, I would taper back a little bit. There's nothing wrong with a little like jolt to your metabolism to have like a really high calorie meal over the weekend, but just don't do it for the whole weekend, you know? Um, try to get to your target weight um, or decide what that is. And then just know that like, it will be challenging to be that lean all year. It's not healthy because it's, it's just extremely challenging to like stay in that really low body fat spot because your, your fats are probably a little too low and that's going to affect your hormones. And as a guy, your testosterone and all those things are so critical for your, your mind and your body to just operate in an optimal state. So, you know, always listen to your body um, and be grace, give yourself grace to not like, feel like you got to get this sorted out tomorrow. <laughs> like mm. think of it as a new th chapter of your life's gonna be the best version of you, but ease into it. <laughs>
shave off, do like negative 200, negative 300, start with that, like cut those calories down, get your macros in a place where it's high protein, um, moderate carbs, low fat, and consistently see how, okay, a week from now, take pictures the whole time. How much has my body changed in that week? Uh, about the same. Okay. Probably need to go down another hundred calories or 200 calories. And once you dial that in and you stay in that caloric deficit for, you know, until you get to your, the physique you want to see, it'll be about not watching the scale. It'd be about watching your body because you might okay, yeah. just have muscle still and you lost a residual bloat, all that stuff. Don't get scared of the scale. Just keep looking at pictures. But that was my experience. And that's kind of still tried and true. I mean, you will hear all the guys on YouTube that really know their stuff typically saying similar things, you know. I would 100% agree with that because whenever even experienced people that have been doing this a lot, most of their life, whenever you hit a wall, it's always going to be revealed by coming back to your, your calories and your numbers and what you're looking at. You'll always find something it's that. So I would say anyone who doesn't want to count their calories, because it seems like a terrible way to live. I would encourage <laughs> you to just say, it's just a cool way to look behind the curtain to be like, Oh, you know, like I didn't realize that. And I was my whole life prior to getting in super great shape. I was still considered amongst my um, close circle of friends and family to be the one that was most health conscious. And that I knew more than most about eating properly. So to me, it was like, wow, like I thought that I already knew. And then when I would track my calories, it's the same thing. It was like, there's way more sugars and things that people realize and sugars just don't, if you want aesthetics, sugars are not your friend um, unless they're in fruit. But again, not while you're in the phase of trying to lean out, like it's just going to be quicker without them. And, um, you know, people get carb scared too. They don't realize that when they're, um, in a lean state, rice is great. I had I had a lot of rice when I was on that plan, um, but it's okay. just the right amount to yeah. give me muscle energy for my workouts. If you have a sedentary lifestyle, there's no you don't have a huge need for for carbs like rice, you know, because you're just not exerting yourself. So that's exactly why like Michael Phelps and and Olymp Olympians will have tons of pasta and rice and stuff like that because it's all like suited to their it, how much they exert all week, you know. Um, yeah. but the calorie counting, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I want to encourage people that I'm not doing calorie counting anymore. Like I only do it when I hit like a rut, you know, that's, that's when I go back, but I pretty much, I can eyeball a lot of things. Now I can read my body. I understand almost all the foods that I eat for the most part. So I'm not doing that. And it's, I hope that's an encouragement to people. You don't feel like you got to count your calories the rest of your life and weigh all your food. But it is a lot easier than ever with the apps that they have, I will say. If you're eating the same things all week, it's already like in your recent foods. It's not that hard. It's just something you got to get used to. That's all. Um, it's when I started working with these high-level um, makeup artists and stylists, you know, um, in the Hollywood area and being in LA a lot with one of my um, modeling agencies, LA models, and they know anyone and everyone. So all the jobs I were doing were really huge jobs. So they bring in some extreme talent, right? And you're sitting in the chair before a shoot and guys don't really need much prep with, with hair and makeup. <laughs> it's fairly quick, but in those moments, they would always put things on my face. They'd say what it is. I, I just was so curious, like, Oh, what's this? What's that hair dryer? What's that hair product? You know? Cause I would, I would look after they're finished. I'm like, wow, like, that's amazing. I can't believe you did mm -hmm. that. And so uh, I just learned from all of them because I would talk to so many interesting people. And when you're in that scene, obviously um, aesthetics and being camera ready, everyone's got different secrets. Everyone's got things that they, they like rave about. And so I just like kind of picked from all of it and um, was curious cause I was there and I'm like, I always want to improve myself. Like I think that being, in a humble mindset and everything you do, it's the best way to, to intake wisdom to, you know, wise men seek counsel. Like you just, everyone's has a different path and story and you can learn so much from each other. So I feel like it was because of that, that made me just want to keep refining and improve, just become the best version of myself. And it wasn't to be 
narcissistic or shallow. It was um, to build confidence and to just feel like I present myself in a professional way for the job I was doing and to also inspire others to say like, hey, I, I wasn't as healthy before and now I feel amazing. And it j- isn't just about how I look now. Like it's, it's a bonus, but I mean, I feel so much more positive. I have so much more energy um, and more agile. And ultimately, like if you're taking care of yourself, everything internally, um, I'm less likely to have certain diseases and I'll have a, a much healthier, longer life when I retire. I'm I'm not going to be someone who is just hitting a wall with my health and just declines. You know, I don't want to work my whole life. So I'm trying to do long game. You know, it's not just about right now. It's about like when I retire, I'll still have my health if I keep, you know, on top of things. I think that um, with, with hair, you know, if you can get a good cut, a fresh cut every couple of weeks, that's going to be huge because it makes it so much easier to style. If it's, if it's cut the right way, then it's not a pain in the butt later to um, style it. Cause guys are lazy, myself included. I don't want to spend a ton of time getting ready. I may be a model, but I'm not a model at heart. I didn't do it since a young age. That's so not my identity. It's just like sweet, you know, like a cool bonus <laughs> yeah, that yeah. I got to do this in my life. Right. And so I asked those stylists what the best blow dryer was, the, what the one they were using, the product they were using, and once I found good product and, and a good blow dryer and a brush, that was it. It was like, they showed me how to style my hair. I think that's so huge. I think that like your hair, I mean, if my hair, if I don't do this it is just a mess, like I have to wear, I have to wear a hat. So that's already like a starter. If like, if you, if your hair doesn't look on point, um, it's pretty hard to like have a refined kind of clean look. So I would say start with with getting a good hair product, um, and don't be cheap, you know, don't like spend 30 bucks on a hair product. It'll last for like six months anyways. And the blow dryers, what, maybe like 80 pounds or 120 pounds. I don't know. Um, for a really, really good one, it'll last 10 years. I, I still have mine. It's like eight, nine years now. Um, and I, and I do have videos on my YouTube channel. If you guys are like, well, I don't even know what, where to start with all that type of stuff. I have hairstyling videos, stuff like that. The next thing I would say is um, for skincare, the water, honestly, people overlook water. Like if you start drinking a ton of water every day, your skin is going to look so much more vibrant. Our bodies are made up of so much water as is. So when you're dehydrated, um, that's what, how skin ages. It just loses moisture over time. That's what's happening. So water is number one. And then um, number two is diet for your skin. You clean up your diet, your skin's going to look better. So I, you mentioned, I, you see, I don't mention uh, like facial products first because yeah. you are what you eat and what you intake mm-hmm. is so huge. Um, but I would say that like a really good moisturizer that has a lot of, you know, organic ingredients that has a light, like 15 SPF sun is your biggest enemy in terms of skincare. Like if you're always going to want to go to sunscreen first that has a moisturizer in it. Um, when you get into the higher things, it'd be like retinoids, retinol. And um, those type of products, um, when you want to do anti-aging and like maintenance after you go to a certain age, but that's a deeper topic. Um, so yeah, outside of that, style, you know, wear, wear clean, flattering looks, wear classic styles with modern fits that go to the tailor with your blazers. It's just not that expensive. Get your pants hemmed. It's like five, 10 bucks. Um, it doesn't take that much to just have a good pair of black denim some Chelsea boots, maybe for nicer occasions, um, a really nice sneaker. That's like, you know, black with a white rim or, or just all white. Um, you know, uh, just some, some nice t-shirts that are layered underneath for like cardigans and, um, maybe some more casual blazers have a hoodie to put under a blazer. It's got a cool look, you know? So it's like a few things like that, that you could literally like line Mm. up in the next week are going to be a massive change, you know? I will absolutely echo that same thing. Um, We're visual creatures and I know that it's a shallow part of our nature, but we are flawed by design, but I also can't deny the reality. Um, I think that until someone opens their mouth and you can get a sense of their vibe and the type of person they are, it's hard. It's hard just on visual alone. People make in a millisecond, they make so many judgments on me all the time. I mean, even Katie, my girlfriend, 
before she met me, she's like, I was sure you're going to be a total douchebag. It's like, <laughs> I was, I, I was convinced you're gonna be told. And I was like, why? She's like, cause you're like all, you know, you're, you're all muscular in the gym and like, you look like really put together. And I figured you'd be super just narcissistic, totally into yourself and just arrogant. Right. And so that's, that's the type of thing where like, it goes both ways. <laughs> like, mm. cause I mean, sure. It's like, it's great to be called attractive, but I think the second you open your mouth is what really matters, right? Like if, if you're not a good person, you have bad energy, you're not going to win regardless. doesn't matter how you look, but I will say that like, I've had preferential treatment ever since I was like more in shape. I mean, it's, it's just how the world works, unfortunately. So to me, I just get excited to prove people wrong when they're like, Oh, you actually like, like care about me and, and my life too. And you're not just like self-seeking. You're not just out to just get ahead in life and, you know, all into how you look and you think you're so great. So to me, that's, that's just like a refreshing thing to remind people that, um, you know, it just because you value the gift of your health and you appreciate style and you like to look nice and present yourself, um, in a way that just looks like um, you have your life under control. You know, you're not sloppy. You're not lazy. I don't think that's a bad thing. If you go away in the other direction, obviously you'll lose your soul in the process. So it's like, find that sweet spot where you can um, feel good about yourself, how you look in clothes and inspire others around you to take their health seriously. Cause again, it's, it's not, it's not just about the external. It's like, there's a lot going on in here uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, that, that are great byproducts from pursuing seemingly shallow things. <laughs> that makes sense. Sure. So um, because I've been in the modeling industry for um, a, a decade now, I've worn every brand under the sun. And so because of that, I'm trying to fix my own problem by the menswear line that I've created. I started a couple of years ago. It's Weston John Boucher, so which is my full name. It's not because I'm arrogant. I want to name my <laughs> brand under myself. My, no, my girlfriend's like, name. why don't you name yourself? Because you <laughs> every, name, every name was taken, honestly. Every name was taken, I thought of. But anyways, um, I was frustrated that fits didn't work across the board with brands. I have to get my blazer from this brand. I have to get my underwear from this brand. So for me, I'm just trying to use my experience in the industry to create something that's very cohesive and it simplifies being fashionable for a guy. So I'm just, that's what I've been most consumed with. Um, so that is my menswear line. Um, check it out if you want. Um, it's a lot of things are out of stock right now, but I have a ton of things that I'm in development right now that I'm designing. I, I mentioned it a lot on my YouTube channel. So you can check out my YouTube channel. It's just Weston Boucher. It looks like Boucher. If you've seen Waterboy, Adam Sandler, <laughs> Bobby Boucher, that's how you uh, <laughs> pronounce it. And uh, yeah, what else? I, I do have um, e-guides on diet and training that I mentioned. Um, I'm hoping to have it something like an app more in the future, but it is my blueprint to how I eat and diet. And that's westonboucher.com slash shop. You can follow me on Instagram, of course. I'm pretty active on that platform. And I, and I kind of like echo a lot of the stuff I just mentioned in case you don't want to have to figure out all those things at once. If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement and male advantage ebook, all links are in the bio.